Hello and welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, our associate pastor, all of our staff, and all of the people who are helping to lead in worship today, I welcome you. We are so excited that you are joining with us today. This is an amazing day of celebration. Of course, it's Labor Day weekend. It is Holy Communion for all people. And we are welcoming a special guest preacher today, um, Bishop Frank J. Beard of the Illinois Great Rivers Conference, and we'll have more to say about that. But it is uh, just an amazing day of celebrating uh, standing on holy ground wherever you are, and we'll have more about that too. So welcome. If this is your first time to worship with Douglas Avenue, we are doubly excited that you are doing that today. want to encourage you and everyone who's joining in online worship today to fill out our contact form. It's pinned right in the comment section. There's a place there for you able, uh, for you to put your contact information so that we can get connected with you. There's also a place there for you to be able to put your prayer requests that go right to our pastors and to our prayer team. So please use that for prayers. We love being connected with you in prayer and in ministry and service in all kinds of ways. So please use that contact form so that we can get connected with you. It is Holy Communion today for all people, so I encourage you to gather up uh, the, the things that you're going to need for that. Some bread or crackers, some kind of a baked good, and then some juice or some kind of a beverage so that when we get to that part of our worship together, we can all celebrate that holy meal that Jesus invites to everyone to participate in. So you are welcome. So go ahead and get those things ready if you haven't already. And then I want to remind you that when we gather for worship, that we covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. So our covenant to participation means that we're going to fully participate. When it's time to stand up and sing, go ahead and stand up and sing. When it's time to pray, go ahead and pray. When it's time to do communion, join in Holy Communion. Be a fully present. Turn off other distractions and other devices if you have them. Maybe light a candle. Of course, get that bread and juice close so that you're fully participating. And then we covenant to be a blessing together. And that means that in our comments, uh, that we're a blessing in what we say and the way we are worshiping together with the people in our household, with the people online, with the people throughout this community and world, that all of that is a blessing to ourselves, to one another, and to the world. Um, as we continue in worship, we also like to share the love and peace of Jesus Christ with one another. It's one of those special things that we do that helps bind us together and shows that we are the body of Christ when we gather. So I invite you now to say, the peace of Christ be with you, and you can uh, respond and also with you. You can do that in the comment section. Share that greeting with people who may be joining with you in your household. Share it out here aloud for to me and to the world and everybody online. The peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you and also with you. Hi, I'm Rita Brinkley. I'm Waylon Brinkley. I'm Callie Brinkley. And I'm Max Brinkley. And, and we, we are, are members, members at Douglas, Douglas Avenue United, United Methodist, Methodist Church. Church. Please receive this call to worship. Go ahead and take off your shoes. Sure, because it's summer and the weather is warm. But also because where you stand right now is holy ground. Go ahead and love your neighbor and do good to all around you. Because where you stand right now is holy ground. Go ahead and respect this home, all of creation, this planet where we live. Because where you stand right now is holy ground. Love all that God gave us and entrusts to us. For we, we are, are all standing, standing on holy ground. Good morning. My name is Nancy Vereen, and I'm a longtime member of the Chancel Choir at Douglas. Let's all start worship with Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee.
victors in the midst of strife, joyful music leads us sunward in the triumph song of life. All right, everybody, it's your favorite time and mine. It's time for small talk. So I want to make sure that the kids who are joining us for worship get in really close so you can see and hear everything that's going on with small talk. Small Talk is led by Miss Laurie, our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and of course, Laud the Lamb and Laud's assistants. So make sure that you get in close for Small Talk, and that's going to be followed by um, our last assignment, DAUMC of the summer, where we've been sharing pictures of uh, all kinds of things that have been going on. And today, we're celebrating the end of summer with people's favorite pictures of this summer with music provided to us by the Brown Family Band. So come in close now for Small Talk and Assignment DAUMC. Good morning, everybody. It is Miss Lori and Laud, the Lamb, and his assistant, Cohen. And happy Sunday. I think we have all started school. You saw last week that Cohen and Laud had started school here at home, part-time. And I know several months ago, fear kind of started to creep into our lives. And it was in the form of masks hand sanitizer, all kinds of sanitizers. And you may have had some of those same fears going back to school. Not knowing what to expect, things being different. We all know that. Anytime something is new, even if it's something good, there's some fear that goes along with it. And it reminds me of a story in the Bible. Somebody else had experienced a lot of fear, and that was Moses. Right? Very good. Moses had a lot of fear when God chose him to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. And he did that through a burning bush. Now we're just gonna light, we're gonna light a candle, okay, Lod? We're gonna light a candle because really nobody in my family thought it was a good idea to set a bush on fire. So we're just going to light this candle. Hopefully I can get this to work. Oh, we're doing it inside today because I've kind of found that trying to light things outside when it's a little bit windy like it is today is very hard. So out of a burning bush, God told him a very simple shepherd. Did you know that Moses was a shepherd? Yeah, he was a shepherd. But God had chosen him. And he said to not be afraid. And the reason to not be afraid is because no matter what, God would always be with him. Yes, always with him. So when you're at school, when you're at home, don't be afraid. Because remember, God is with you. So we have our shepherd here leading the sheep. And God is with him, and he's with you. And yes, that is my dog in the background. I'm so sorry. Just remember, don't be afraid, guys. God loves you. He's with you, even when you are most afraid, especially when you're most afraid. And coming soon to a mailbox near you, your own Lord and Jesus on a stick to have with you. Bye, guys. Miss you.
is my profound honor and privilege to welcome and introduce today the Reverend Dr. Frank J. Beard, resident bishop of the Illinois Great Rivers Conference of the United Methodist Church. Our bishop oversees the 800 churches and pastors across central and southern Illinois of the United Methodist Church. He does the spiritual guidance, administrative oversight, and vision for our collective work in making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Bishop Beard is an avid Chicago Bears uh, football fan. He's a catcher of fish, not just a fisher, and a proud husband, father, and grandfather. He leads our work together as United Methodists in the Illinois Great Rivers Conference with passion and compassion and a powerful vision of who God is calling us to be in ministry together. We welcome Bishop Beard today as our preacher and just are so looking forward to hearing from him. Please join me in welcoming Bishop Beard. Members and friends of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, when I think of worship, one of the images that comes to my mind almost immediately is that of a young lady named Iris Patterson who worships at New Hope United Methodist Church in Anderson, Indiana. I was appointed there as a first year pastor and I remember Iris coming down the center aisle in her choir robe and singing about Jesus saying or singing these words, I love to praise him. I love to praise his holy name. You could see Jesus on her countenance. You could see Jesus as she clapped her hands and as she danced with joy. I love worship. Worship is what brings us closer to God, brings us closer to one another. Worship is what lifts our burdens and feeds our souls. I hope that you are enjoying your online worship. I know it would be a, a lot uh, more uplifting if we could get together uh, in space and in, uh, in our buildings. But right now, that's the best we can do. Um, Jesus said it along this wise, it doesn't really matter where you worship, whether on this mountain or that mountain, he said to the uh, lady at the well in substance. It doesn't matter if you're on this mountain of that mountain. You must worship God in spirit and in truth. My hope is that the Holy Spirit, bearing witness with your spirit, will lead you into the type of worship that Iris Patterson and so many others have experienced. I don't know about you, but I echo Iris's song. I love to praise him. I love to praise Jesus. I lift up his holy name. God bless you as you worship. Hi, I'm Paige Keppel and I work in the booth with Mark. Today's reading from the Bible is Exodus chapters three, verses one through six. It is the beginning of the story when Moses was called by God to lead the Hebrew people out of slavery in Egypt and into the land of freedom. Let us open our hearts to hear what God is saying to us through this reading. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see God, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, Here I am. Then God said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible reading we have received today. Amen. Next, we are going to sing Holy Ground.
I'm almost ready to preach. That is to preach myself happy watching God at work during this pandemic. I don't know all of your background, but in my background, it's okay to shout. It's okay to have a visible and passionate display towards the God that I love and worship. And I'm just about to that point where I'm ready to shout. Now, some will wonder if I'm crazy or just out of touch with reality. Yes, I am aware that we are still in the middle of a pandemic, a pandemic that doesn't seem to want to go away. I am aware that institutional racism is deeply embedded and entrenched in the church. I see the growing rift and the divide between the haves and the have nots in this nation of wealth and plenty. I hear the shouts for fairness and justice as they echo all around us. I see the pain and the hurt of folks who feel like the church has shut them out. I hear the voices of despair from young folks who believe that the church for them is no longer relevant. I hear the cries of folks that have been abused, battered, and bruised, and have just about given up on life. Why then, if you are aware of these, you might ask, why then are you about to shout? What is there to shout about? Well, like that old spiritual that says I, I was way down yonder all by myself and I couldn't hear nobody pray. I don't know if you are aware of that spiritual or not. It's one of my favorite. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been there where you felt that you were all alone, that you were by yourself and your spiritual life just wasn't getting it done. I was way down yonder all by myself and I couldn't hear nobody pray. The song goes on, I was down in the valley, but I couldn't hear nobody pray. So I got down on my knees, but still I couldn't hear nobody pray. Has this pandemic sapped you in such a, a way and zapped you in such a manner that you feel like you've not been heard, that you've not been listened to, that your prayers have not gotten through? Finally, the song takes a turn. It says, I was down there with my Jesus, but I couldn't hear nobody pray. This pandemic has forced us to recognize that Christians, even in isolation, even in quarantine, even when we can experience worship in ways that are familiar and normal, that we are not without hope as long as we remember that Jesus is with us. That spiritual writer went on to experience the presence of Christ while he was down there all by himself and couldn't get a vote of affirmation or a note of affirmation from anybody else. That leads me to say this, private worship creates fertile soil for public worship seeds to blossom and grow. Allow me to say that again. Private worship creates fertile soil for public worship seeds to blossom and grow. Public worship begins, we know, that when two or more are gathered together in his name. Now that's just a fancy way of saying if it's just you and your small group, or you and a couple of friends or family members, even if it's just you and Jesus, worship can still happen. Our traditional holy sites have been shut down, or access to them has been limited due to the coronavirus. But we have discovered ways to worship in spite of these obstacles. We have discovered ways that we can practice the presence of Christ among us and with us. Windows and doors of opportunity have been opened to those willing to explore new ways to pursue, practice, and participate 
in worship. It has become amazingly clear that God is at work in spite of these deadly worldwide pandemic. In spite of the deadly pandemic, God is at work. In the Bible, in the book of Exodus chapter 3, it records a story of Moses' experience when he saw a bush on fire on the side of Mount Sinai. When he saw this bush, he noticed that the bush was not consumed. It was on fire, but it didn't burn up. It was there that God caught Moses' attention. And Moses went over to see this sight. And God said to him, take off your shoes, for the place you're standing is holy ground. Holy ground and holy moments are joined together for our edification and our education as God equips us to assist in the work of the emancipation of those trapped in spiritual darkness. We dare not miss this opportunity to recognize that God is trying desperately to get our attention and to help us experience God's self-disclosure in new and exciting ways. Moses turned aside to see this unusual sight, and it was there that Moses had a divine encounter with God. I believe the writer of that spiritual, the singer of that spiritual, had a divine encounter with Jesus. He said, I was way down yonder all by myself, and I couldn't hear nobody pray, but as he talked about the presence of Jesus, he had an encounter with God. I'm having a blast watching God work in the Illinois Great Rivers Conference creating holy ground in unusual and unanticipated places. You know, it occurred to me the other day as I was reading the scriptures that God has a stimulus package. God has a stimulus package ministry. God provided daily manna for the children of Israel during their wilderness wandering. God provided for the widow of Zarephath. God provided for Elisha and for the prophet's widow using her little oil jug. God provided a song for Paul and Silas at midnight that opened up the prison doors. God, just as God has always done, transforms our hurts and turns them into hurdles for his glory. God has a stimulus package. You ask me why it is that a shout is welling up inside of me? It's because we have a good, a gracious, and a loving God that is present with us in the form of Jesus Christ. This season of the coronavirus has forced us to look for God in new and unfamiliar places. Yet God is calling us into new territories with new opportunities to discover new ways of encountering the God who is constantly trying to get us to turn aside and take off our shoes. We are indeed standing on holy ground. God is not content to burn in the bush. God wants to set our hearts on fire. Are you available? Are you listening? Or are you simply rehashing re, uh, the echoes of that sorrow song? I was way down yonder all by myself, and I couldn't hear nobody pray. That beautiful sorrow spiritual that I quoted earlier is often followed up with another spiritual that asks the question, brother, sister, how did you feel when you came out of the wilderness? How did you feel when things got better? How did you feel when you came out? The response is, I felt like clapping. I felt like singing. I felt like shouting. You see, that person went down in the wilderness. They said, I went down, I didn't go to stay, but my soul got happy, and I stayed all day. Yes, there is welling up inside of me a shout of joy and a shout of victory. And I'm not going to wait until this battle is over for me to shout and give God the praise that God is due. I am fired up because I'm with Jesus on holy ground. In his presence, the song says, there is joy beyond all measure. And at his feet, peace of mind can still be found. 
And if you have a need, I know he has the answer. Reach out and claim it, for we are standing on holy ground. We are indeed standing on holy ground. And I know that there are angels all around. Let us praise, let us shout, let us worship Jesus now because we are standing on holy ground. I want to invite you now into a time of generosity. We have been so blessed at Douglas Avenue with everyone's financial giving that has continued to support the incredibly powerful work of our congregation together at Douglas Avenue in outreach to our community and keeping our building working uh, in ministry and keeping our staff supported and just all of the things that we're able to do together for the making of disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Thank you for your financial gifts. And I encourage you to please keep giving as we head into this new fall season. You can do that right online with our giving portal at our webpage. And the link to that is pinned right in the comment section. You can do that by setting up automatic bill pay with your financial institution, by setting up an automatic withdrawal with uh, Douglas Avenue. Just call the church office to do that. And of course, by mailing in your checks into the church office. All of that giving makes a huge difference as does your participation and your prayers. So I encourage you again to uh, fill out that contact form so that we can be connected with you and can uh, work with you and help you as you are living and growing into your faith in Jesus Christ and service to the world. During this season, we have been engaging in a special blessing, uh, the back to school blessing for Du Bois Elementary School. We have been able to provide at this point at least 180 headphones for at-home online learning for the children at Du Bois. They said this was something that they really needed and people at Douglas Avenue and in our community have stepped up to provide that. We've received almost half of the offerings that we need to pay for those headphones. They're $14 a piece. I encourage you if you have not already done so to please give to support that back to school blessing for Du Bois Elementary. You can of course do it online through our giving portal in the special offerings drop down menu and you can send in your checks just marked Du Bois Elementary School to the church office and we'll get that going the right direction. I want to encourage you again uh, as we are going to be heading into our time of Holy Communion to bring your bread, your crackers, your baked good, and your juice or beverage close so that you have those ready for communion. And as you're doing all of these things, I invite you to receive this offering of hope that is brought to us by Nancy Gillespie. Hi, I'm Nancy Gillespie. Uh, my husband Bill and I have been members here at Douglas Church uh, since the early 1980s. Uh, currently, I'm involved with the uh, singing choir and with the bell choir. Pastor Meredith asked me to uh, just say a few words today about what gives me hope. Uh, and as I thought about that topic, I thought, what times in my life have I actually said out loud, this really gives me hope? And I remembered, in almost every instance, it has to do with children, young people, the youth in our schools, in our communities. Uh, my work life started out uh, with uh, teaching, high school teacher, English history. Uh, that was, of course, the challenges that come with working with high schoolers, that adolescent age, where they're in transition. And uh, of course, all of us around them, uh, around them can find that challenging. And, and it's challenging for them because every day is sort of a new situation for them. Um, lots of joys, lots of admiration for the kids and the challenges that they overcome. I especially um, uh, had admiration for the students that I worked with through the uh, Department of Children and Family Services. These were kids who really have difficult beginnings. Uh, they uh, overcome tremendous obstacles. Many went on to get their GEDs, uh, their jobs, and it was, it was wonderful when you were paths would cross years later and they would come to you and say, do you remember me? I just wanted you to know I turned out okay. I had a good life and I'm happy. Uh, that's inspiring to me. That gives me hope. I know that's going on today in our schools and in, within the DCFS and uh, dealing with the troubled children of Illinois. So that gives me hope. 
um, as a senior, and I'm retired now, um, I, I spent some hours at the uh, Presidential Museum. And it's fun on bus day when the school's uh, buses come and all the kids pour out into that museum and you see them start to absorb that Lincoln story and all the values and uh, good lessons that are learned with that. Uh, and, and then here at church with the Douglas family kids that are here, um, I especially love the programs that they are responsible for. At the conclusion of Vacation Bible School, um, the Christmas pageant, it's wonderful what they can do. Uh, that's inspiring. It, that gives me hope. The most meaningful for me youth activity, though, is, is their, when they come back from their youth missions and they share what it was like to work in those communities and to uh, uh, share with each other and all the, the, the communal services that they have with the kids that are there from all other states very often. And uh, some of those ties are so strong. And it's, it's an experience where it, it, it increases their, their Christian values. And I think that's just a wonderful experience. That gives me hope. Um, as Christians, um, Methodists, uh, I, I think that uh, God has given his kids one of the greatest gifts. Uh, and I think uh, they're, they're the promise of the future for all of us. And all of that gives me hope. As we prepare for communion, please join the Philbrick family in singing, How Great is Our God.
Jesus Christ invites to his table everyone at his feast of Holy Communion. Whatever you're doing right now, wherever you are, whoever you are, church member, not a church member, with your culture and race, whatever your age, child, youth, adult, with your gender identity and sexual orientation, sitting alone or gathered with your household, in the fullness of who you are, even if you are feeling empty, you are welcome here. This is Jesus's holy meal, and you, dear friend, are invited to participate however you want to participate today. And it is now time early in our communion where we bring our sins and our confessions to God. Um, and we will do that now in silence. And then after that, we will receive God's pardon by the grace of God. So please bow your head and share your um, sins to God. And now I would like for you to hear our prayer of confession. Lord of abundance and compassion, we confess that when we see the overwhelming needs of your beloved world, we want to turn away, seek our own security and retreat from the chaos all around us. Forgive us for not following Jesus in loving compassion and healing service. Forgive us for hoarding what we have instead of willingly offering it to you. We know that you are present in the midst of seemingly impossible situations, meeting us in our doubts, using even our failings and mistakes for your purposes. In your unlimited compassion, have mercy on us and make us merciful, gracious, and faithful people. Amen. And God's assurance of pardon is this. While it is true that we are broken and sinful, it is even a greater truth that the God of infinite love and mercy never gives up on us and continues to work in us and through us through the grace of Jesus Christ. Living in that healing hope and love, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. We're gonna continue now with our prayers of great thanksgiving. And if you haven't done so, please go ahead and get your bread, your cracker, whatever the baked good is that you've brought with you, your juice, your beverage, whatever that is, and bring that close in so that as we share this meal together, even though we are separated across time and space, we have all of those things ready with us. I invite you to join with us in our prayers. The first ones are, um, uh, I'll be saying a line and you'll say a line back. Those words will be on your screen and I invite you to join in the motions that are a part of this prayer as well. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise to the Lord. As the sun sets earlier, the days become cooler and the crops near harvest. We celebrate the bounty of your creation, creator God. As we gather at Jesus' table, wherever we are, we remember the ways that we can use our gifts to care for our siblings in need. We long to extend this table through the work of our hands and the missions of this church. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the name of Jesus, we offer the prayers of our hearts to you. As we gather at Jesus' table in many places and in many different times, we ask that you receive our prayers as we share them aloud and in our hearts and in the comments. We pray for all, O oh God, that are sick, depressed, lonely, or grieved, we ask that you draw near to those that have these special needs, O oh Lord. We pray for all who are beginning of a new school year. We pray for the teachers, administrators, the parents, 
and especially, oh God, the students. We ask you to draw near to this situation and keep all safe. We pray for our church family and those seeking a church family, that they will know and feel your presence among this church family. Oh God, we pray for the ministries of this church and all the generosity and all of the ministry that is done from this place. May we continue to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. We pray for our world, for our nation, for our denomination, and all of those places where there's unrest, natural disasters, division, racial tension, all of those things, O oh God, that are troubling us. We pray, O oh God, that your um, presence will be felt there and that you will be the guide for all of these places that there is such division. Lord, in your mercy, receive these prayers that we have offered to you. Merciful God, as we celebrate this meal, help us remember the laborers in the field, the harvesters of the wheat and grapes, the transporters of their yields, those who transform wheat into bread and grapes into juice. Bless their hands and their feet as they labor at farms and in gardens, in trucks and in warehouses. We give thanks for all those who labor and we pray for rest, refreshment and justice for all those that labor is not recognized. We remember Jesus that after laboring on the streets of Jerusalem, doing justice, loving kindness and walking humbly with God, that he clutched bread in his hand. He blessed the food, gave thanks, and heartfully expressed to his friends that this was the bread of life and said, as you eat this bread, remember me. After supper, Jesus grasped the cup filled with the gifts of the vine. In his blessing, he reminded them, whenever you drink of this cup, remember me. And so we remember Jesus' love for us, for all people, and for all creation as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. I invite you now to lift up your hands and uh, join with me as we pray the prayer of the Holy Spirit on our gifts of bread and juice. Lift up your hands. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered in many places and times and pour out your Holy Spirit on all the gifts of bread and cup that each of us has brought. Make all these gifts of bread and cup stir us from stagnation into active and powerful love of you, holy God, our neighbors, and ourselves. May our participation in this holy meal transform us into the people you are calling us to be. We pray all of this through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, connected in many places and times. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. You can put your hands down. With the confidence of God's precious children, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Please um, join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The bread and juice, the baked goods and beverages that we will eat are a tangible experience of Jesus's transforming grace and love, feeding us, healing us, and challenging us from the inside out. I invite you to pick up your piece of bread, your baked good now, eat and experience that this is Jesus' love for you.
And I invite you to pick up your cup, your beverage, drink and experience that this is Jesus's love for you. We will now pray our prayer of thanks. So I will begin that and you will repeat after me. Eternal God. Eternal God. Thank you for this holy mystery. Thank you for this holy mystery. In which you give yourself to us. In which you give yourself to us. Through the bread and the cup. Through the bread and the cup. Send us from this meal. Send us from this meal. In the strength of your spirit. In the strength of your spirit. To give ourselves to others. To give ourselves to others. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us join together in one of our favorites, How Great Thou Art. Thank you so much for joining in this time of worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We love you. We love connecting with you. We love that we're able to worship together in this way that is safe and healthy for everyone and for our community. And I hope that you'll continue to connect with us, that you'll fill out that contact form so that we can be in connection with you, that you'll continue to join with us uh, for worship online and in all the ways that we are working together and growing in faith online and some in person during this season. Um, I want to, of course, extend a special thank you again to Bishop 
Frank Beard for being in worship with us today and leading us with his powerful message, reminding us uh, that we are standing on holy ground. And now as you go into your day, go knowing that God loves you completely, that God calls you to stand on holy ground wherever you are, that Jesus Christ goes with you and saves you and loves you every day, and that the Holy Spirit empowers you into this powerful life of faith and ministry and living that you are called to be in the name of Jesus Christ. Go from this place to love and serve your God. Amen.